The Herzegger and Cecily was the last of the truly great clipper ships, and when she was wrecked near Salcombe in 1937, thousands came to line the cliffs and mourn her passing. On board the shipwreck at the time was a young girl called Diane Warner, seen here with the ship's captain. I met Diane in 1997. She was well into her 80s then, but still as sharp as a tack. I first asked her to describe what happened when the ship struck the rock. I'd been on deck with my friend Pamela Erickson to look, because she said, you must come up and see a great ship in sail at night. It's such a beautiful sight. And she took me on deck and it was all quiet and it was wonderful, not with no engine, just the beautiful sails against the sky, dark sky. And then we went down and went to bed and I was fast asleep. And my friend woke me up and said, we've hit something, get up quick. So I got up quick and she said, get your clothes on. They weren't my clothes, actually, they were partly hers and partly the captain's, because he would not have any woman on board his ship in a skirt. Hmm? Every, all women had to wear trousers. He said it was only fair on the Finnish boys. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then we, um, she took me, first of all, up, and then she said, come with me. The first thing we must do is to go and pack up the boys' private effects, because they value them very much and we're going to put them all in, tie them up in bundles in sheets so that they could be rescued. They belonging to the Finnish seamen, the boys. And then we went up on deck and Captain Erickson took me to the chart room and said, I want you to see this. And he showed me the chart and how he had already changed his course out into the channel. And it's never been found out he hadn't changed it far enough. It's never been found out really why they hit the rocks. Anyway, he then took me to the bottom of the um, one of the masts and we looked up and he said, could you climb up there if you had to? Because it's going to be a breeches boy. So I said, well, I think I could if I had to, but I don't want to. <laughs> and anyway, he then took me and sat me on a hatchway, a big wooden hatch cover. And he said, um, sit there and stay absolutely still. Don't, don't go anywhere else. Sit there until I tell you to move, which I did. And um, then everything quietened down and eventually the lifeboat came and we went ashore in the lifeboat. I then asked her if she had been frightened. I think I probably was frightened because when I was asleep in the hotel afterwards, um, I had awful dreams of the ship rocking and the, all the rigging, shaking, banging, shaking, banging over my head. So I think I must have been disturbed, but I didn't feel it consciously no. very much. I had always been puzzled as to why she had been on board. The captain's wife, who I'd been uh. at school with as a, uh, in, in London many years before, and then she'd married this Swedish, well, Finnish, Orland Islander who was a captain, and um, of course she travelled with him. And that's um, when they got into Falmouth, she phoned me and asked me to come down and spend the weekend in Falmouth. Then he had these orders to sail immediately. That's important because um, people said, why did he sail if the weather forecast was bad? We had no option. He'd been ordered by his owner. It so wasn't so bad that he said, you know, it was quite impossible, so he sailed, and that's what happened. It was too foggy, he shouldn't have gone. <laughs>